Hello, everyone. Welcome to Career Destinations, where I show you how to get to your dream profession step by step. Take this opportunity to learn about your preferences, aspirations, and interests by exploring different educational pathways and career possibilities in Canada and the U.S. But it has to start with you. You have to think, research, plan, and take action. No one else can do it for you. Protect your dream and follow your path to success. Also, if there's any career you want me to review, please let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you like this video and click on the subscribe button. In today's video, we'll go over the step-by-step -step process needed to take to reach your destination as an entometrist. Let's get started. What does an entometrist do? In short, an entometrist is a primary eye care provider who provides comprehensive routine eye exams to examine, diagnose, and treat ocular conditions and diseases. So where do we start? Best to start planning when choosing high school courses. Wait a minute, did you say high school? Why do I have to worry about choosing high school courses? Well, okay, it's not something that will completely change your destiny if you pick the wrong high school courses. However, it's good to know which courses to do when deciding on a particular field. Remember, the main purpose of high school is to prepare you for either college or university. In general, you should use your time in grade 9 and 10 to explore what you like, figure out which subjects caught your interest, and to just have fun. When you enter grade 11 and 12, this is the time to really hone in on what you need and not what you want. The courses that you need are usually going to be the prerequisites for a particular major in university or college. You can check out the university or college websites that you are interested in to get more information about the specific courses. Examples of prerequisite courses for science programs are biology, chemistry, physics, English, calculus, and advanced functions. Please note in Canada, it is mandatory to go to university prior to pursuing autometry. Meanwhile, in the U.S., they use college and university interchangeably in everyday conversation. The American system used the term university to define a group of schools or departments. One of those schools or departments will be defined as a college. Choosing university or college courses. Congrats! At this point, you graduated high school and you are currently studying in a university or college. If you decide to go through the conventional route, a science program, then this will put you on a straightforward path for autometry. Most of the courses that you will need to take in order to get your science degree will be the compulsory courses to apply for autometry school. Therefore, no time wasted. But keep in mind that it's not absolutely necessary to major in a science program when applying for autometry. An alternative route will be more time consuming. For example, let's say you major in music. The four-year music program has a list of compulsory courses you need to take and a few elective options, leaving you little room to fulfill the optometry prerequisites. The downside is that you may take more than four years to complete, costing you both time and money, but as long as you complete the required courses, regardless of taking the conventional or alternative route for optometry admission, your application will be accepted for review. This means they will take your application under consideration. Examples of prerequisite courses for autometry program are general biology, general chemistry, general physics, general psychology, microbiology, organic chemistry, biochemistry, statistics, English, humanities, and social sciences. Please review the Atometry School website that you are interested for a complete up-to-date list of courses. Now, there are some extra things you need to do. While studying for your major, you need to find time to study for the Optometry Admission Test, OAT. The OAT is a computer-based test you need to take before applying for Atometry School. This test focuses on six different modules, biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, reading comprehension, and quantitative reasoning. So now you can see why it's important to have a strong science background. I'm not sponsored by the Autometry Admission Test. I just want to help students to get to their career destination. For more information, please visit their website. It's also important to take some time shadowing an autometrist to see what you'll be getting yourself into if you decide on this profession. Shadowing means you're basically a shadow of the person with expertise and experience. This is usually a volunteer position and your job is to just observe and learn. 
Most optometry schools require X amount of hours of shadowing an optometrist as part of the application process. Next thing to do is to write a personal statement, which is a brief letter explaining who you are, why you love optometry, why you want to be an optometrist, work and volunteer experience, and your strengths. Remember, this is your opportunity to sell yourself and show admission committee why you are a good candidate. Just make sure you have everything organized and completed in time for application cycle. If successful, they will offer you an interview. This can be done either in person or via video chat. Optometry school. Next thing you know, you made it. You got accepted into your dream school. You should take a moment to be proud of yourself and your accomplishments. At this point, you just have to study and pass your courses. After the first or second year of optometry school, you can look forward to a white coat ceremony. This is where you get your very own white coat, now making you look more like an optometrist. So be proud of yourself again. This is an achievement on its own and not everyone get to this point. Boards exam. In your third and fourth year of optometry school is when you will start to focus on taking the board's examinations. These exams are required to successfully complete in order to get the license to practice optometry. In Canada, the Autometry Board Examination is called the Autometry Examining Board of Canada, OEBC, and the American Board Exam is administered by the National Board of Examiners in Optometry, NBEO. These exams will test all your knowledge and practical skills that you learn during your optometric studies. Again, I'm not sponsored by these organizations, just guiding students in the step-by-step -step process leading to their dream job. For more information, please visit their websites. Jurisprudence exam. After passing the board exams, you will need to successfully attempt the jurisprudence exam of the province or state you wish to work in. And that's it. You reach your final destination of becoming an optometrist. If you like, you can opt to do a residency to further enhance your knowledge and skills in different areas of the profession. This is completely optional. Examples of different types of residency are family practice, geriatric, pediatric, low vision, ocular disease, cornea and contact lenses, vision therapy and rehabilitation, community health, brain injury rehabilitation, refractive and ocular surgery. Remember, this step is optional. Well, that's it. I hope you liked this video and found it to be helpful. If you want to see more videos, please give this a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions on how to start your quest, or are currently on this journey to become an anatomist, please share your comments below. Always remember to think, research, plan, action.